Justice Bond video. See, this is why we need to start supporting more conservative candidates to put the Republican Party back where it belongs, plain and simple. Now, one conservative who's looking to restore founding principles is Chris McDaniel. As a Mississippi state senator, McDaniels' voting record is proof he puts his conservative principles ahead of allegiance to the party. McDaniel is now challenging, challenging Senator Thad Cochran for his Senate seat. Um, Cochran is 76 years old and a six-term senator who's been in office for 36 years. It's exactly the type of guy who stepped down, get voted out, get rid of the old school establishment types. Now, with the Tea Party's backing, McDaniel and his campaign have raised over $500,000 in the last 10 weeks alone. So let me welcome to the program for the first time Mississippi State Senator and U.S. Senate candidate Chris McDaniel. How are you sure. doing, sir? Doing well. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's get into some of these issues as we introduce you to the audience. The spending. Yeah. We keep hearing that Republicans want limited spending, limited spending, but Boehner and McConnell don't seem to really be doing anything about the spending. That's right. For an awfully long time, our party's been lost. It's abandoned its principles, no more so than Senator Cochran in Mississippi. A country that's $17.2 trillion in debt with unfunded liabilities somewhere between $128 trillion and $200 trillion has to begin to make tough decisions. Spending is the problem. It's always been the problem, and it's time we correct it. As a state senator, states could not operate the way the federal government operates because states can't print money. That's right. So... It's a very different mindset if you're in a state government versus the federal government, and they just seem to not think about limits on their budgets. Uh, they don't. Uh, the states are statutorily obligated, for the most part, to balance their budgets each year, while the feds, on the other hand, are not. They certainly can borrow money. They can print money. Either way, it's devastating to our future. And that's where we are, fighting for the future of this country via, right now, the conservative movement. If we're successful, the country will be successful. If we fail... The country's going to fail. You know what I don't hear Republicans talking a whole lot about ever since the Kelo decision is private property. Yeah. Um, whether private property is taken from us in the form of uh, the, potentially this MIRA program where they're going to take even more money for us to create a new program or outright land grabs, it seems the Republican Party has kind of forgotten private property. It has, and it's the cornerstone of our freedoms. The cornerstone of the Constitution is the ability of men and women to hold and possess private property without government interference. Now, the Kelo decision changed that, naturally. The public use doctrine was thrown out of the window. Next thing you know, we have a theory that says government can take property from you and give it to someone else if they can use the property better than you can use it. For example, generating of tax revenue. Our founders would be appalled at that decision. I was appalled at that decision. And Mississippi took great steps to make sure we fixed it. Now, as far as states' rights go, and I know that sounds like code talk for slavery for some people, but I believe in the Tenth Amendment. Yeah. And I'm, I really enjoy hearing Senators Mike Lee and Ted Cruz and Rand Paul talk about how some things need to be taken out of the hands of the federal government and placed back in the states. You're a state senator. Would you like to see that? Oh, absolutely. It's a real simple calculation. The central government's a government of limited authority. Article 1, Section 8 gives it all the powers it has. If it doesn't have those powers, it needs to allow the people in the states to exercise those powers respectively. That's all we're asking. If we do that, you'll find a good, solid constitutional system, the one that used to exist years ago. Returning to that system is the answer to everything that else this country. Now, you're an attorney. I know you were active in opposing Obamacare. Do you feel like the people that were opposing it after reading certain provisions in it, it was almost like... The rest of the people had to have it affect them negatively before they felt what we all knew to be true. Yeah, and that's a real shame if you think about it because constitutionally speaking, it was a nightmare. It's a travesty. There's no provision of the Constitution that gives the federal government the authority to take those types of actions. They did it nevertheless. And then Justice Roberts gave us the opinion uh, for the ages when he basically the twisted. The opinion. Yeah, he did. When he twisted the conservative philosophy and actually rewrote Obamacare to make it somehow justifiable constitutionally under the taxing clause. Uh, I thought it was silly, frankly. We fought hard. We fought for a couple of years to defeat that. Now our fight's somewhere else. It's not to say the lawsuits don't matter. They do matter. But we have to take a new step and make sure that Obamacare once and for all is repealed. I'm not talking about putting a Band-Aid on it. I'm not talking about trying to fix it. That's not the place of the central government. Repeal it, get rid of it, and let's do something else. Isn't it amazing how the Supreme Court's opinions trump the Constitution? I mean, we actually hear people say, well, the Supreme Court's here to interpret the Constitution. 
No, it's not. Nothing in Article 3 says the Supreme Court is here to interpret the Constitution. And I've asked Mike Lee about, these, uh, about this. Isn't it time to start asking if you became a senator? Yeah. When a, a Supreme Court nominee is going through yes. the Senate hearings, isn't it time to start asking that question? What's your view of Article 3? A absolutely. And the idea that the Senate would advise and consent on a, uh, a justice, whether it's a Supreme Court justice or a circuit court justice, uh, a court of appeals justice, that doesn't abide by the Constitution specifically, that's asinine. We have a role as a separate entity in government, that is the legislative branch, to offset those types of decisions as best we can. And there's no justification for this living constitution concept that liberals have created. None whatsoever. And in fact, that's how they've grown their agenda. That's how they've grown government well beyond what the founders intended. The idea is to start taking some of that back, and that starts today. All right, let's talk education real quick. If if the New York State Teachers Union is now opposed to Obamacare, I mean, uh, to a Common Core, what else do you need to know? <laughs> if the most blue state teachers union yeah. doesn't like this thing, yeah. it's time to push back on the Department of Education. Absolutely. It's a travesty. It's a travesty. We should begin to ask the question, why does, does the Department of Education exist at all, first of all? But secondly, when programs or schemes like Common Core are forced upon the states, it really begs the question, where in the Constitution is the central government given that authority? The answer, it's not. So that's as far as we have to go. If it's not in the Constitution, it shouldn't be doing it. Bottom line is, yes, coming course to travesty, it has to be stopped. Now, we've been covering this uh, Republican retreat, and I have my new set piece over there. It's a white flag of surrender. It seems like the Republicans are trying to be Democrat light on immigration. Yeah. Instead, of, instead of saying all Americans, regardless of race, should enjoy a country that respects the rule of law. Absolutely. The rule of law, one of the other foundations of this country, we cannot ignore that. The people can't lose faith in that as part of who we are. And the idea that we would go soft on that issue should be appalling to people of reasonable sensibilities. This country has a responsibility to protect its borders, period. And it hasn't. And some of the Republicans, frankly, are, are very disappointed in their tendency to want to compromise that issue. But in fact, we shouldn't be surprised. They've compromised a lot of issues, haven't they? Over the yeah, last it, years. It's, it's just, you know, when I, when I hear people say, well, the Republican Party is the conservative party, if you're a con that only makes sense if you're not a conservative, right? right I mean, sure, if you're sure. actually a conservative, you believe in free market sure. principles and limited government and, and, and states' rights to run you know, their, their, their sovereign domestic programs, like, I, I don't know, spent a lot under Bush, you know, ran up the deficit, handed it off to Obama. Well, uh, several of those programs, particularly the, the, the spending, wasn't conservative at all. And in so many ways, it allowed the Democrats to almost take that subject off. Well, you guys table. did it. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's something we have to regain. Principle matters. Courage matters. It's the rarest of commodities in politics right now. And that's one of the reasons when Mike Lee and Ted Cruz stood there on that floor and fought the way they fought, it inspired a whole generation of conservatives. It's time to regain that spirit, regain that courage, and regain that Congress. And we're not going to do it by surrendering. We're not going to do it by compromising. Simply because a Republican holds the seat doesn't mean it's a conservative. Conservatives have to reclaim the party and then reclaim the Congress. Now, with that, Cocker, I mean, with, with all due respect to the man, it's not like he's a first-term senator who hasn't gotten his sea legs and you're, you know, pushing him out the door. Yeah. He's been there for a while. It's not like you're really, you know, taking the guy's yeah. thunder away. He's had, what, 36 years? It's more than that. 30, okay, he's yeah. 76 years old. Yeah, 41 years old. Okay, he's been 41 years. I'm going to say... Time's up. Time's up. Absolutely. You know, uh, many of us feel like Congress needs to be refreshed from time to time. It does. It just needs to be refreshed. New energy. Ideas based on the Constitution. The idea that these men and women would go to D.C. and be co-opted by that system. It, it's disappointing. He's been there a long time, and it's time for change. It's time for new blood. But more importantly, it's time for conservative change and conservative blood. And he hasn't been a conservative in an awfully long time. All right, thank you so much for joining us in studio, coming here to New York City. It was definitely yes, good to meet you, thank get you on the program. But before we go to break, just to make you all uncomfortable, here's some more of that Richard Simmons video that was paid for by taxpayers. Whoa! More vote count next. All right.